The Holy Tales. Today I'm going to tell you the story of John. John Wanerius was the younger son of Zebedee and Salome, and the younger brother of James the Elder, who was also a disciple of Jesus. John was one of the most beloved disciples of Jesus, and like his elder brother, he too was a fisherman. John lived with his family in Bethsaida, and Capernaum, and later in Jerusalem. He went around the world preaching his master's doctrines, and also went and preached in the churches of Asia Minor. After John became a disciple to Jesus, he wrote the Gospels of John one, John two, John three, and Revelations. Once. John was banished to the Isle of Patmos as a prisoner for preaching in the name of Jesus. Later, he was freed, and he eventually died due to old age. John was not only a man of action, but he was also very ambitious and held no tolerance for unfair or selfish people. John was very close to another disciple named Peter. And they would often be sent together for ministry work, but it was John who always stood out and acted as the spokesperson of the band. As years went by, old age caught up with him, and he soon forgot all about his ambition. All he remembered was the Lord's command of love. John once wanted to take his own life. By drinking poison from a chalice, but the Lord spared his life for all the good deeds he had done all his life. He finally died of natural causes, and the chalice with the snake became his apostolic symbol. That was the story of John. I hope you children enjoyed it. Oh yes, we sure did. <laughs> The Holy Tales. Well, today I'm going to tell you the story of Matthew, but he also had another name. Another name? Oh yes, he was also called Levi. Hmm, that sounds interesting. All right then, let's begin with the story. Matthew was the son of Alphaeus, and he lived in Capernaum, and his name meant a gift of God. The call of Matthew to the band of Jesus' disciples is of great importance. Matthew's other name was Levi, which was probably given by Jesus when he became a disciple. Matthew was a tax collector and a publican. He was engaged in public service work and gathered the taxes which the people paid. However, in those times, the Jews hated the tax gatherers because they believed that it was the right of the people to pay taxes as a tribute only to God. Paying it to someone else meant breaking of the law. The Jews hated the tax gatherers not only for this religious reason, but also because they were very unjust and unfair towards them. The Jews regarded these tax collectors nothing less than criminals. Matthew was one of them. Like every other tax collector, he would assess taxes for their people and also lend them money. And charge high rates of interest from them. Yet Jesus chose him from amongst all the hated men and made him one of his own. Being the master, he saw the potential in the tax collector of Capernaum. Matthew was different from all the other disciples of Jesus, who were mostly fishermen. He knew how to write, and with the power of the pen. He brought to the world the teaching of Jesus in the Hebrew language. 
apostolic symbol of Matthew is three money bags, which help us to remember that he was a tax collector before Jesus called him. That was quite an interesting story, Holy. So it is because of Matthew that we began to know more about Jesus. Hmm, I see. The Holy Tales Today I'm going to tell you the story about Jesus' last and final disciple, Thomas Didymus. Did he... Mm, us? It's Thomas Didymus, Tubby. Thomas Didymus was one of the lesser known disciples of Jesus. He lived in Galilee and went to preach Jesus' words in Parthia, Persia and India and probably received death as a martyr near Madras at Mount St. Thomas in India. Thomas was his Hebrew name and Didymus his Greek name. At times, he was also called Judas. The Bible does not tell us much about Thomas except his name. However, John in his Gospel defines him more clearly as being present in the raising of Lazarus in the upper room. He wanted to see nail prints in Jesus' hand and also the spear scar in his side to believe in him. Soon, he was known as the Doubting Thomas. Thomas had a bewildered and confused mind, and yet he was brave and courageous. Since he was a pessimistic man, he believed only in things which he could see. However, he had immense faith and was a devoted man. When Jesus rose from death, he came and invited Thomas to put his finger in the nail prints, in his hand and in his side. It is here we see Thomas making the greatest confession of faith, and Thomas's doubts transformed into faith. In India, Thomas was commissioned to build a palace for the king of India, where he was martyred to death with a spear for his lord. His apostolic sign is a bunch of spears, stones, and arrows. So, did you like the story? Oh yes, it was wonderful. We loved it. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as these kids did. We'll be back soon, so stay tuned. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the whole world.